great. We have just learned that we can save a lot of time and a lot of money by taking samples of a population to estimate population parameters. But wait, there are issues with taking samples. You can't just go out and take any sample you want. Samples are by definition subsets of a population. However, samples in of themselves are not necessarily representative of that population. When taking a sample, it's important to reduce what is called sampling bias. And sampling bias is the systematic difference between estimates and parameters. If you collect squirrels only from areas that have high density of squirrels, let's say from areas where they are being fed by people, right? you are more likely to overestimate the size of the squirrel population. When you are working with living things, which many biologists do, you can also have what is called volunteer bias. Volunteers for a study are likely to be different, on average, from the population. For example, volunteers for medical studies may be sicker than the general population. If you are studying animals, those that are caught may be slower or more docile than those that are not. This bias can really mess up your estimate. So you need to be very careful about the types of organisms you sample. The primary goal of taking samples is to make sample taking as random as possible. To do this, a scientist needs to put in a lot of effort and think about how they do their sampling. And even if you sample in a perfectly random way, your estimates will differ from the true parameter simply by chance. This difference is called sampling error. Remember, I said that estimates are random. Because they are random, they are influenced by chance. Estimates will even differ among random samples from the same population. So, to protect against this, a scientist must increase the number of samples they are taking, or what is called sample size. A key takeaway is that the larger the sample size, the less sampling error due to chance. So, now that we know that, what makes a good sample? Oh, good samples are a random and independent selection of sufficiently large number of individuals. In a random sample, each member of a population has an independent and equal chance of being selected. But be careful. Even good sampling has its limitations. Analyses are only directly related to the population studied. Therefore, you need to be clear on what that population is and be honest about limits to any generalization you make. So, an analysis of samples of Central Park squirrels only directly relates to squirrels in Central Park, not squirrels in any other park or in any other city.